Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today it's going to be part 4 of trying to fix things around the home. So I've already done part 1, 2 and 3, this is part 4. So now, as and when things break around my home or for example friend or family member's home, then I grab the camera, I film it and if it's a short enough repair then it doesn't warrant its own video but I piece a few of them together and put it down as these trying to fix things around the home. The main thing about this is to give you confidence to try to repair stuff yourself with a little bit of research on Google you can find the answer to most things if you're willing to give it a go so that's what these videos are about a lot of fixes will be very simple but they're still fixes and they might not be easy to everybody so to kick it off what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove the staining from this mineral glass on the watch here so the crystal so basically if you look at it under certain light you can see there you go straight away now the camera's picked it up if you look around this bit here can you see it's all clear around here but look there's like a kind of looks like it's burnt around these bits here so I think what's happened is it's also on the top I think that it's been polished at some stage and the wheel probably went very fast with some compound you know abrasive stuff on the glass and it looks like it's been burnt onto it so what I want to do is I want to polish the glass to try to remove that now I'm just going to show you under the macro feature on the camera because hopefully it will really pick it up then Right, so here we go, have a look. It starts here in between the six and seven o'clock and it spreads all up the side here, all the way around, really bad at around 10 o'clock. Can you see all in this corner up here? And it also spreads round to the top across there. So I want to, uh, I want to give it a polish to see if I can remove that. Now, let me show you what I'm gonna be using. I'm going to be using this stuff here. This is a glass polish. Now, you might be wondering if your watch is made out of glass or plastic, acrylic. If it's made out of acrylic, it is so much easier to polish. So if you listen to this one, if you get your finger and rub it like this, you can actually hear it vibrating because it's plastic. Yeah, so that's this finger on top. Now, if your watch is made out of mineral glass or sapphire, then listen, it won't do that. Yeah, if you go really hard, sometimes you can get a slight squeak, but not to the same degree. Yeah. So now, if your glass is made out of plastic, acrylic, all you have to do is get something like this poly watch here. It's about three to four pounds, and you put it on a bit of a cloth, rub it around in a circular motion, and it's amazing. You can feel it going abrasive, abrasive, and then within a, about a minute or two, it just goes smooth. And then, no matter how scratched your watch is, unless they're really, really deep, you can normally get a really good finish on it, so it's nice and easy. If you don't have this, you can also try and use whitening toothpaste, because that's abrasive as well. Things like teacup will probably work. I haven't tried that, but definitely a lot of people mention toothpaste. Uh, but unfortunately, with glass, it's so hard, and also with sapphire, this doesn't work and toothpaste doesn't work. So I'm gonna be using this glass polish here, which is basically like a diamond paste that you rub on. Now I have tried to clean watches before using this and I haven't had much success. I did this and I must've put about seven or eight, no, not seven, maybe five or six applications and you can still see all the scratches here. They're not as deep as they were, but they're still there. So it's definitely not ideal, but I'm hoping it will work for this job here. And then if it removes some of the other scratches, then it's a bonus. So with this here, it's like a two part process. You've got the repair paste and then you've got the finishing paste and you put these little strips. You start with the like the pinky red ones then move on to the white and you put them on this little stick here and you just rub it as hard as you can along this flat. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. You do it in three minute intervals. So I'm gonna do it all around this. Well, basically I'm gonna go everywhere, but I'm concentrating around this edge here and hopefully by the time I finish, it will be gone. So that's what we're gonna be working on right now. So I'm just gonna be fast forwarding it through it all because it is probably gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes, but I think it's worth it if I end up with a clean dial because then when the sun's shining on it or you're in a place with bright lights, it's not gonna look like part of my watch is burnt. I'm just going to wipe it off with a damp cloth. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it away from all the bezel just yet because uh, I need to now put the finishing one on. I'm just going to have a quick look through the eyepiece, see if it's mainly gone or not. Otherwise I might have to put on another coat. 
Yeah, I think so. I need to put the macro feature on, but let me just put the finishing coat on, and then we can inspect it properly afterwards. Now, for this, I could probably just get away with using even polywatch because I'm only cleaning the surface of it, and uh, also maybe even something like Brasso or possibly toothpaste. But I already had this stuff, and it is supposed to be a glass polish, hence the reason I'm using it finish. But this is 18 pounds, so I wouldn't, you know, normally I wouldn't go and buy that. It's only because I had it already. So I presume this is a finer paste now to give it like a, a, a nice clean polished look at the end. Right okay it appears to be gone now what I need to do is I need to clean all around the edge here in the bezel because what's happened is all that paste has kind of got caught in between the glass and this bezel so let me give that a good clean. With a little brush or a toothbrush and also I'm going to be using some IPA so it can just evaporate off. There you go so you can see the seats kind of the IPA has gone grey. So let's go on this bit, let's go on this bit here. There you go. Okay, I can still see a few scratches on it, so in my opinion it doesn't seem to work wonders when it comes to actual scratches, but that burning or whatever it was has certainly gone and it is looking lovely and clean. It really looks sparkly now. So the light's just bouncing off it. So first of all, let's show you up here. Can you see? None of that now. And let's do the macro feature. Okay, so remember before when I angled it and it caught the light? You can see now it looks perfect. So I'm really happy with that. Overall, it just seems to look brighter. So I suppose without your eye couldn't really pick it up most of the time, but maybe it was kind of uh, just making it look dull when you were looking through from that angle. While now, it's just lovely and uh, lovely and clear. I'm just wondering if this is this here or if it's a reflection. I think that's on the inner ring. I think that's just a reflection. Yeah, I think the light's bouncing off those. That's not actually on the glass. Okay, yeah, well, happy with that. So let's move on to the next one. So in this one here, we're going to be trying to remove this indentation on the carpet. You can see that it's really deep. And basically, it comes from just furniture legs. So if you've recently bought a new settee and it's a different size than your old one, you might be left over with these, or if you've moved, for example, a wardrobe or something. Now... You can try hoovering this, but it doesn't really make much difference. A good little tip for getting rid of this is to throw some ice cubes in it. So we're just going to put about three ice cubes in that, and basically we're just going to leave that melt, and believe it or not, that will bring the pile of the carpet back up. Now, if it doesn't work when these ones melt down, put another couple of ice cubes on, and then you should find that it brings it right back up. It might not be perfect, but it really does work. So we're going to come back to this later now. Okay, so about three hours have passed now, and there's still a little bit of ice left. But as you can see, it's already starting to kind of fluff up a little bit. So once these melt completely, I'm going to put about another two or three on, because this was very deep, and also this is a wool carpet, so it was really very, very flat. And then, uh, hopefully after the second round, we can get some kitchen roll, dry it all up, and then hopefully I'll be able to just fluff it up again with my finger. Okay, so it's the next day now, and it's completely dried, and look, it's almost gone. You can still just see the main indentation in the middle there, but look, the outer square really now is gone. So to get this bit back, you could just use the nozzle off the hoover just to go over it, but even roughing it up with your finger, you should find that 
from a little bit of a distance, you won't really recognise that anymore. So if you have a look now, you see from a distance, it kind of blends in. You can still just see it here. But in comparison, if you have a look at it to this one here that hasn't been done, you can really see the difference. So it's a nice little tip. Right, let's move on to the next one. Right, next we have some Christmas lights that don't turn themselves off. Now, although it's the wrong time of year, my daughter likes these lights in her room just because they're nice and colourful. So at the moment they're on, you can see they are on, but yet when we turn them off, they still stay on. And it feels like there's some sort of switch in the middle, and yet they still stay on. So it doesn't matter what we're doing with the switch, it always stays on, which is obviously not going to be very good for the battery. Sometimes when it's off, and if you wiggle them around, it does uh, sometimes go off but then wiggle them again and they come back on again. So I'm thinking it's a faulty switch. So let's just quickly take it apart and see what we find. Right, annoying, there's a big lump of glue gun glue here, you know, the hot glue. That's just all melted into place. All right, okay, well it's working now. So I think it's, uh, if I was to take a guess, I would say that it's a bad connection in the switch. Oh, I'm wobbling it about now and it's, uh, it's behaving itself. Well, I'm going to spray a little bit of contact cleaner in there. Is what I'm going to be using. Well, it's working now. How long it's going to work for, I don't know. Obviously, I didn't do much there at all. Just took the switch out and it just started working. So, uh, if it goes again, then maybe I can clean the board with a bit of IPA. But I'm thinking it was just a faulty contact in the switch. Maybe it got knocked and uh, maybe it was just bent a little bit. But it's all working now, so I'm just going to leave it like that because it's a very cheap item and I don't want to waste too much time on it. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we're back again here and they keep coming on. There you go, look. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening here, but that's, uh, I mean, definitely seems to be something to do with a bad connection. What I'm wondering is this has got a timer in it and it really doesn't need to have the timer because my daughter just turns it on and off. I'm wondering if I should just bypass that timer completely and just wire it up to the, uh, to the switch. Now this battery contact here is broken off it, so that will need to be soldered back on. I'm just going to get my multimeter on this little switch and see if I can work out what all the contacts are, because it looks like there's four of them. So I'm just going to put it to continuity. I think the timer thing, what it does is it like stays on for 12 hours, goes off for 12 hours, that kind of thing. Well, I'm not too sure because these are LEDs, so I don't want to just kind of bypass, if I put the voltage straight onto them, they're probably just going to blow because there is resistors and stuff here in the way. See, maybe this chip is faulty, but to me it still seems like a connection issue because when I wobble it around the place, it's, uh, it's coming and going. I'm just going to try to open up this switch here. Well, that's certainly very simple. All that does is there's a little thing here which slides along. It doesn't look faulty to me. It looks absolutely perfect. I'm going to give them a little bit of a squeeze just to make sure they are making a good, strong contact, but it doesn't look like the shorts occur in here. 
Right, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that switch. So I'm going to put it back together. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reflow everything on the board, just in case it is a bad solder joint. If it's this chip here, then uh, that's going to cause me problems unless I can just bypass it. So that is it completely reflowed and uh, the wires stripped back and done again. It is working now. I don't know why it wasn't working before properly and I don't know whether it's going to keep working now or not or whether it's just going to fail. But at least last time when I wiggled the switch within about three or four minutes it came back on again. So hopefully I'll know in five or ten minutes time. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to leave it filming and then uh, I'll come back to this in ten minutes. Right, okay, so uh, I think about 15 or 20 minutes has passed there and they don't appear to have come on, so maybe it's going to be okay now. I'll have to keep an eye on it and see. They seem to be okay at this moment in time. Whether or not they are going to be working or not, I don't know. Maybe when I edit the video, I'll see that in that 15 minutes they were flicking on and off, I don't know. But if I leave it off now and uh, move it around the place they're not coming on so as far as i'm concerned i'm hoping this time they are fixed right now let's move on to the next one so next we're going to be trying to get this annoying mark off the screen on this little atari handheld so if you have a look here just here you can see that there's a mark and it's not on the outside it's on the inside of the screen and it actually came delivered like that. This is only a couple of weeks old and as soon as I took it out of the box I noticed that. But it's not worth me taking back because I think it's going to be easy to just remove it. So what I'm going to do is pop the batteries out of this and then uh, take it apart and I'm hoping I can just use a little Q-tip, a little cotton bud just to tap that little bit out of it and then I'm hoping that I won't have to clean the rest of the screen because apart from that the rest of it is actually okay. Now, of course, I could take this back, but uh, it's not worth my while. I might as well just take it apart. I'm sure it's not going to be a hard fix. But obviously, if you did this and then you broke it, then you're going to be responsible while you within your rights to take it back because it isn't as expected. Right, okay, there is a sticker that's keeping this together at the bottom here. And you know what, I really don't want to peel that off because I quite like this little thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do it without removing that sticker. So you can see the battery contact just goes to here, so I'm just going to gently pull that out. There we go. And now hopefully nobody will ever know I've been in here. Okay, so it looks like I can leave this board in here for the buttons, but the D-pad over here is going to have to come out. Oh, that's interesting. I've just noticed there's a USB port there, a micro USB. That's not on the outside. Mm, I wonder whether it's possible to add extra games to this. Yeah, look at that. Would that be to program it? That's interesting. I've never YouTubed this or anything. I don't know whether there's anything out there to say how to add games or... I mean, that's there for a reason, isn't it? Excellent, there we go. Right, so all I have to do now is find out where it is. And I think that is it. I'm just going to have a look, see if there's any, any others. Looks like there's a few marks around the place.
It's interesting, when I rub the Q-tip along it, it's creating all this white stuff. Okay, well it's going to need a bigger clean now. Maybe it was ever so slightly sticky. I did just want to tap the things off, but then I noticed some other marks, and now you probably can't see in the camera, but there's actually quite a few bits of kind of like, you can see like flaky bits all around the place. So I don't know whether there was a little bit of adhesive on here or something, I'm not too sure. But anyway, I need to get it all off. Okay, so I think that's clean, so I'm gently going to put it back together. Before I do that though, I just want to make sure that this D-pad here is clean because sometimes I've noticed the left and right inputs can take a little bit, sometimes you have to press them a little bit, a little bit hard to actually register. I just want to make sure it definitely is nice and clean. Therefore I screw it up, I just want to have a quick look. No, okay, that looks uh, that looks awful because I've got a load of marks on this side here, you can see. And they're on the inside. This is actually turning into a bigger job than I thought. I'm going to have to get some compressed air to blow that away. I'm wondering now if it's got some like anti-reflective coating on it because it's just weird that every time you go near it, it's just creating more and more uh, dust. I think that will do. So let's pop the screws back in. There we go. Okay. I am happy with that. I can see a slight little bit in this top corner here, but it's still better than having a great big lump right in the middle bottom there. Let's just see what it's like when it's on. Yeah, that's fine now. Yeah, happy with that. You can see now there's nothing distracting on the screen anymore. So I won't be fixated on that little dot in the middle of the screen anymore, so I'm happy with that. Now that's it for this particular video. Of course I will be doing more as and when things break around the house. Now I know a lot of these fixes do seem very simple to a lot of you, but not to everybody. Some people are scared to hold a screwdriver, they're worried they might do damage. But that's the great thing about working on things that are already faulty, because if you're only going to throw it away anyway, there's no harm to take it apart and try to fix it because apart from your time you've got nothing to lose and even your time you'll find that when you do fix something you're not going to equate it to how long it took because hopefully you will get a sense of achievement and it's a good feeling when you see something working again so instead of sitting down and watching EastEnders or whatever soap you might be watching you might get more enjoyment by taking something apart and then fixing it, and then it will give you more confidence to do more things in the future. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and please check out my older videos on fixing things around the house, and also maybe please subscribe for future videos on how to fix around the house. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.